So there are multiple measures of variation. The simplest one is called the range. When you have quantitative data, the range is the difference between maximum value and minimum value. Note that when you find the range, you do not include the middle values. It's just two values in your collection. In example one, we have two corporations. The first corporation salary is listed. The second corporation salary is also listed. Question says, find the range of the starting salaries for corporation A. So in corporation A, you have to identify the minimum salary, the minimum number, and identify the maximum salary, maximum number, do the subtraction. Maximum minus the minimum. So what is your maximum value here? The maximum is 47. What's the minimum value, minimum number? It is 37. So the range in the salary is 10 in thousands of dollars. This is your range. Very well, you can look at the graph of these two data sets. If you find the range of the second collection, maximum minus minimum, the maximum number here is 58. The minimum number is equal to 23. Very well. The outcome is 35. So the range of the second company is greater than the range of the first company. Now look at the graphs of these two companies. The range of the first company, 10. The range of the second company. So as you can see, the greater the range, you see more spread in your data. So greater range, results in more spread in the graph. As you can see, the first graph is more compact, but the second graph is spread out. Very well, let us move on to the next page. So as you can see, range just uses two numbers in the collection. What do we do? We need more calculations. We need to include the rest of the data in our collection. So we have to define something new. The definition of deviation, the deviation of an entry like X in a population is the difference between that entry and the mean. So the deviation of X from the mean is X minus mean. So X minus mean. For example, in corporation A, example one, let us find the mean. The mean is the sum of all data 
divided by the total number of entries. So these are the information that you have. 41, 38, 39, 45, 47, 41, 44, 41, 37, and 42. You add all of these together, 415, divided by the total number of entries, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the mean is equal to 41.5 or $41,500 is the mean starting salary. Okay, now how do we find the deviation in each of these values? The deviation is defined as x minus mean. So 41 minus 41.5 is the first deviation. Then 38 minus the mean, which is 41.5, is the deviation in the second data. Third one is 39 minus 41.5. Next one, 45 minus 41.5, then 47 minus 41.5, then 41 minus 41.5. Next one, 44 minus 41.5. Next one, 41 minus 41.5. Next one, 37 minus 41.5. And finally, 42, the last entry minus the mean gives you 0.5. These are all the deviation from the mean. Okay, we have a chat. U symbol, where is U symbol, Bryce? It's mu, it is mu, the mean of the population. Mu, like the cat, mu, mean of the population. For population, we use Greek letters. Any other question? I have a question for um, the deviation column, the X minus uh, mu, is when you add them up, it's always add to zero, is that right? Yes, it is always zero. The Thank sum you. of all deviations is equal to zero. Thank you. Very well. After finding each deviation, we raise that deviation to the second power. What are we trying to do? You're trying to form an average that shows the average deviation from the mean. So as you can see, if you add all of these deviations together, the sum is zero. So it doesn't give you anything. It's not a positive number. It's not a negative number. So what are we going to do? We're going to raise each of these deviations to the second power, then add them all together. Then we divide that by n, the population size, and we define something that we call population 
variance. Sigma squared population variance is equal to the sum of all deviation squared over population size. Since you're raising each deviation to the second power, the outcome is unit squared. Like in salary, you get dollar squared. To get rid of this exponent, we take square root of population variance and we call it standard deviation. Population variance, sigma squared. Population standard deviation, sigma, which is square root of variance. Please take your time. Write these two down. Important formulas for homework, for the exam. You're going to use your calculator to calculate population standard deviation. Perfect. So there is guidelines for you how to calculate your standard deviation and your variance without using a calculator. Again, everyone, on the exam, I expect you to use your calculator to do these calculations. So first of all, you find the mean of the population. If you're using your sample, instead of mu, you have to use x bar. So for sample, it is x bar, not mu. Remember that for population, we use Greek letters. For samples, we use just normal English letters. x bar. Then you find the deviation of each number from the mean. So x minus mu. If you're using a sample, you use x minus x bar. Next, you square each deviation. So you take the deviation, you square it. x minus x bar squared. Then you find the sum of all of these deviations square, sum of squares. After that, you divide it by n to find the population variance. If you are working with your sample, you divide it by n minus 1. So s squared. For sample, instead of using sigma, we use s. s squared is the sum x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. And finally, you take square root of variance and you find standard deviation. Again, for your population, you use Greek letters. For sample, we use S. Okay, please take your time, write the guidelines down. Then we go over one example together using these 
methods and also we learn how to use a calculator to calculate standard deviation for population and the sample. So excuse me, you mentioned that for sample we use n minus one? Yes. But for the population we just use n? N, yes. Thank you. Very well, let us take a look at this example. In first example, first company, Corporation A, you found that the deviation for each of those data entries. In step three, we square each deviation. So you multiply each deviation by itself to get deviation squared. So this 0.25 is nothing but negative 0.5 times negative 0.5. So negative 0.5 squared. Here, negative 3.5 squared. Okay, so negative 0.5 squared, then negative 3.5 squared, then negative 2.5 squared, then 3.5 squared, then 5.5 squared, negative 0.5 squared and you continue calculator has a built-in function it does it very quickly and finally 0.5 squared perfect in the next step you add all of these squares together, which is 88.5. You divide it by population size, which is 10, and you have your variance. So the variance sigma squared, sigma squared, or variance is 8.9. You have to take square root of the variance to get your standard deviation. Standard deviation is important for us, SD, because it has the exact same unit as the data in your collection. So this guy is important, standard deviation. Please take your time. Then we watch a video together. In our example, the original data that you have is this collection. 41, 38, 39, 45, 47, 41, 44, 41, 37, 42. Now I want you to follow the instruction on this video to use your calculator and actually calculate the standard deviation using calculator.
So first, So go to stat, choose edit. Go to stat and edit. Go to stat, then edit. Then enter your data. One by one. Enter 41, enter 38, enter 39, enter 45, enter 47, enter 41, enter 44, enter 41, enter 37, and enter 42, all in L1. After that, so now go to stat again, then calc. Since you used L1 as your list, you can write second, second, one. It shows that you have all values in L1. Very well, you have a list of values. X bar representing, so X bar is sample mean. S sub X is sample standard deviation. Sorry, would you please repeat it again? So I'm writing this in chat. If you read the chat, you see the instruction oh. in the chat. S sub X is sample standard deviation. Sigma sub X is population standard deviation. If the question says, Hey, you have your population. The population is given in this question. You have to use sigma x for standard deviation. 
if the question says this is a sample, you have to use S of X as the sample standard deviation. That's the difference between these two, depending on the question. Okay, let me write this for you here. If the question says we have a population, then use sigma x for standard deviation. If the question, for example, says we have a sample, then use S of X for standard deviation. Perfect. By using a calculator, you must get the exact same value as your standard deviation. Note that calculator doesn't give you variance. So let me write this note for you here. Note. Calculator. Doesn't give you variance. It only calculates standard deviation, SD, to find variance. Just take standard deviation and square it. Your variance is standard deviation squared. 